All righty, here I am at the two o'clock ish hour, and it is another Midlife Mojo Monday. Welcome, welcome. I'm really excited to talk to you guys tonight about, I think, a pretty important topic. And, um, you know, it's funny because this week's topic in the group in general is called Kindness Counts. And we pre plan these topics, you know, way in advance. I hadn't didn't even think how appropriate this topic would be for this particular week in, in history, right? So there's like the golden rule that we all have that treat others, right, as you would like to be treated. And when we treat others as we would like to be treated, and, or we even treat ourselves as we should, right, as sometimes we treat others better than ourselves, right, we actually feel pretty good mentally and emotionally. When we go and we do a kind deed for somebody else or say a kind word, it helps us as well. So I know emotionally we kind of think, oh, well, that made me feel better when we do that. But there are actually physical benefits to kindness. And that's really what I want to talk about today. Let me show you. There we go. There's my whole face. All right. So just think about it for a moment. Like, how do you feel? Like, think about when you've done something like that you just know is good, whether it's anonymous or just, you know, the person knew. Like, think about it. Think about how you felt physically. Like, what were some of the, the actual physical things you could feel in your body? Like, I know when I do something good for somebody, it's like, I don't know, it's like a whole, like, energy. Like, you can feel, like, physical energy going through my body, right? Like, almost can feel those endorphins get shot off and you've done something good because it feels good. And we're going to talk all about that. Okay, hold on one quick second. All right, perfect. Okay, so before we get started, I was when I was writing this topic, I was thinking, ooh, what's a good oil for this? And I was like, oh my goodness, and I barely used it too, so I'm so excited. I remembered my my one heart oil that Young Living came out with this summer. Has anybody got this oil? Oh my goodness, I got this. Yeah, it's yummy. What if I drop in my hands? So this one heart oil is um, a blend that was created by an. Hold on, hold on. Oh, so good. Nice, yum. All right, so this is a blend created by Young Living, and it was to celebrate the joy of creating unity and connection in our communities by opening our hearts to love and service for others. Like, I love that, right? And I think this is a perfect top oil to go with this topic of kindness, right? The refreshing aroma of this balancing blend, and it is a refreshing. I wish I could bring the aroma through the through the screen for you there but go grab yours if you have one um but this refreshing aroma balancing is balancing and it can encourage a bright outlook on life and the awareness that we're all in this together so what a perfect oil i think everybody we should all in unison be doing a big sniff together um this proprietary blend can blend it. proprietary blend can also help you find your center and connect to your inner spirituality. So you can try using it during prayer or meditation or just when you wanna connect with your inner self. So I think not only is it a great oil when we wanna do kindness and good deeds for other, but also maybe if we're having a hard time with, on ourselves and we're being not so nice to ourselves, this is also another great oil. To kind of just get, you know, look deep inside and, and, and find that connection to ourselves, our true selves, not this, thing that we make up in our minds that isn't even real. All right, so some of the oils, I just kind of wrote them down. There's this little bottle here, 13 different oils in here. Pretty amazing and some great ones. So I'll just kind of read through the list real quickly. I'm not gonna go over what they're all for, but all together they did this beautiful blend. But there's lemon, lang lang, northern lights, black spruce, lime, roman chamomile, jasmine, akatea, spearmint, black spruce, and blue tansy so oh wait more i'm sorry camphor geranium and frankincense holy moly right those are some good oils hey aurora thanks for joining me live so today i'm going to talk about <clears throat> you got right got here right in the guitar i'm getting right into it right now so today i'm going to talk about the science behind kindness and our health right so as we age i mean if it's something like as simple as like you know and something as contagious as spreading kindness can keep us looking and feeling our best then like i'm all in like who else right i mean how easy that's an easy fix for anti-aging is just being kind and science shows us that as children we're actually biologically wired to be kind right kids don't come out of the womb bullies and mean 
right? And we can further develop this trait with practice and repetition. It takes practice. It's something we lose over the years as, as you know, outside influences, the stress of our everyday life, maybe some negative people have come into our life and we just lose this inherent ability to be kind. So it's something that we can actually practice. And the good news is that kind, kindness, as I said, it's teachable. You can actually, there's actually a kindness muscle. It's kind of like weight training. And there's been a study by, what's his name? Dr. Richie Davidson at the University of Wisconsin. And he said that it's kind of like weight training. We found that people can actually build up their compassion muscle and respond to others suffering with care and a desire to help. I love that, right? So at any moment, we can all have an even larger capacity to, to do good in this world. So I had five thing reasons that I came up with why, why kindness is good for your health. So number one, kindness, hey, Lisa, oh, goody, you got in, excellent. So we're just starting, here we go. So kind, number one, kindness releases the feel-good hormones, right? The fact that you're feeling better, right, when you do something, it's just like not because you feel better. There's actually something going on. The pleasure centers in your brain are activated. When you do nice things for others, it boosts the serotonin, the neurotransmitter responsible for feeling satisfaction and well-being. Right. It's also like when we do exercise, that's the that we boost our serotonin. Well, altruism, acts of altruism, kind deeds can also reduce, release these endorphins. And it's a phenomenon they call helpers high. Like there's really actually a term for it. Helpers high. That high you get when you do something good for somebody else. A 2010 Harvard Business School study survey of happiness in 136 countries found that people who are altruistic, in this case, people who were generous financially, such as with charitable donations, were happiest overall. But you don't have to give money to, to, to feel that. You give of your time, you give of your energy, you just give of yourself. And I truly believe it's the same results. So what are some ideas maybe you guys wanna throw out there for a little serotonin pick-me-up that maybe something that you could do for others, something simple, something small that could light them up and light you up, literally light your brain up inside right? Because kindness is contagious. We, there was a movie years ago called Pay It Forward, but I think it was with Haley Joseph Osment, the kid from The Sixth Sense. Has anybody seen that movie, Pay It Forward? I haven't seen it in years. You know what? I could have shown my daughter that. Maybe when she gets home, she's home today. Maybe that'll be something we watch this week, because that was a great movie. But the positive effects of kindness are experienced in the brain of everyone who witnesses that act improving their mood and making them more significantly inclined to pay it forward, right? So sometimes maybe you can just witness somebody doing something, right? Like you see, you know, a young teenager walking an old lady across the street. That makes you feel good too. And maybe it makes and inspires you to pay it forward and do good. And so this means that one good deed could truly create a domino effect and improve the day of dozens and dozens of people. I love, I don't know about you ladies, but I love like, you know, on those stories, I mean, I love Facebook Watch. That's like kind of what I do on Facebook. There's only like you know, three, five minute stories, but I love these ones where there's stories of people who just paid it forward. Something as simple as, you know, buying the person, you know, behind them, you know, coffee or Dunkin' Donuts or something like that, you know, to doing something much, you know, much more, you know, uh, generous. I watched one just the other day and it was, you know, a gentleman who somebody, you know, at one point in his life had done something with major gesture for him. And so he went and turned around and he actually bought a house for somebody to pay it forward. I mean, oh my goodness. Write a note to someone and send it through the mail. I, I mean, isn't, that's a great one, Lisa. You know, we had my friend, uh, Wendy Wolf on a Women with Mojo, uh, Mojo episode a few months I mean, two, three months ago. She wrote a book all about letter writing. And in this day and age, right, you know, to get like a piece of mail that's not junk political you know, or a bill is rare. So yes, totally lights up somebody's day to do that. And I'm a terrible card sender. Like I'm the worst at sending cards. Like I have really piles of birthday cards that I buy and don't send. And yet I appreciate it so much when I get one. So it is something that I, I actually um, I've actually made a recent commitment to myself to getting better at because I do think that little, right? It's like a surprise in the middle of your day, right? When you just like open that up. So great one. Um, all right. So number two, kindness eases anxiety, right? 
So anxiety, whether it's mild nervousness or severe panic, or even like full-blown depression, is common for midlife women. Unfortunately, it is. There's a lot on our plate. There's a lot hormonally going on. And when we go to our doctors telling them how crappy we feel, they just often jump right to the, the antidepressants and the meds for anxiety, which then lead to a lot of other issues like weight gain and just other issues that, you know, weigh on us and make us not even feel good. So, you know, there are several natural ways to deal with anxiety and depression. And we've talked about many of those in this group, right? Certain foods can help us, exercise, meditation, essential oils, all of those are some great ones. But really the easiest one, and there's science behind this, the easiest one and most inexpensive to ease your anxiety is to be kind to somebody. There was a study on happiness at the University of British Columbia, and it had a group of highly anxious individuals perform at least six acts of kindness a week. <clears throat> and after one month, there was a notable significant increase in positive moods, relationship satisfaction, and a decrease and social avoidance in socially anxious individuals. So, I mean, that's pretty awesome, right? I mean, all this, just doing six kindness acts a day helps like some, some pretty significant anxiety in people. And part of that reason was due to the release of the hormone oxytocin. So you guys probably know oxytocin, right? I think that that's like the one that happens when we're pregnant, the oxytocin, right? The feel good hormone. Um, and it occurs when also when we do these acts of kindness. Oxytocin increases our self-esteem and our, and our optimism, which is extra helpful when you're anxious or you're shy, maybe in a social situation. So, you know, next time you're feeling a little anxious and maybe you're in a situation, like I, you know, people think, oh, you're in like, you know, an extrovert. Like I can get in front of a screen, I can get in front of a room full of people if I'm like the talker, but put me like in a party situation where it's just like a casual, like everybody and I don't know a lot of people, I'm very uncomfortable, I'm very anxious. And so often you'll find me as the helper, right? Like doing something like that just makes me feel more comfortable. And so look for opportunities when you're feeling anxious to help maybe the host or somebody else with something. And that may ease your own anxiety and ease up the situation, make you feel just generally more comfortable. So well, with what a joy, your phone call to a shut in. In this day and age, absolutely. You know, you know, my mom, I mean, really, I, you know, she has not pretty much left her house except for to see me and come to my house or go to my dad's house. That's it since March, you know, and I think about her a lot. And I think about all of the people who don't have somebody just to just to check in on them and have been, you know, alone for all of these months. So it really I, makes you know, someone say, you know, it reminds me, I, um, you know, I was delivering groceries for a short period of time a couple of years ago. And there was um, an old woman that, you know, older, but, you know, she had her walker and so forth. And she was definitely older. And, um, you know, you communicate back and forth on this app. And she was telling me that something, and I had already gone and seen her. I think I had delivered to her once before. So I remembered her when she came up and she was saying she didn't feel good. I could tell by what she was ordering. And so I just bought some flowers, right, for her. And so when I delivered her groceries, I just gave her her flowers. Like you would have thought, that like I gave her a million dollars, like short of her sobbing, like she was so grateful for that gesture. She told me she couldn't remember the last time somebody had given her flowers. When I saw her one more, only one more time after that, I think, because it was kind of random how you get people, but she still like had them, like, I, you know, I mean, so truly one little bit of act of kindness can make somebody's week, day, month, you have no idea what it might do to change. Video chats are really helping you. Yes, exactly. I mean, honestly, I think that's one of the best things that's come out of this, um, this you know, quarantine world is the ability that so many more people have learned how to learn how to video chat, and especially um, us people 50 and up, right? 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 and up. Maybe we're a little afraid before about the whole getting online, the Zoom thing, and now it's almost become like a norm. So I think it's, you know, good and bad, but, but you know, um, you know, the internet has its, has its good moments and the bad, but I think in terms of its ability to connect people and for our ability just to take that moment. Awesome. Um, okay, so also, uh, this is, I'm just ready. oh, I had volunteering. I'm just looking at this thing, anything else. Sending your time to an organization, that can help as well. All right, um, so number three, kindness is good for your heart. 
right? So you've heard like making others can like warm your heart, right? You hear that term a lot, um, but it actually can affect the chemical balance of your heart. Giving help to others protects overall health twice as much as aspirin protects against heart disease, according to Christine Car Carter, Arthur, Arthur, author of Raising Happiness and Pursuit of Joyful Kids and Happier Parents. And there's this whole study that I got some information from all about kindness. But I mean, that's a pretty powerful fact that I want to replace and repeat that, right? Giving help to others protects overall health twice as much as aspirin protects against heart disease. Wow. Wow. Okay. Let that sink in. Again, so many ways that we can just, you know, help our bodies naturally, simply without running for the pill or the potion. Okay. Unless the potion, of course, is your essential oils. <laughs> but those are our natural potions. Um, so as I said earlier, you know, kindness releases this hormone oxytocin, which also is known as like the love hormone. So when you're like in love with somebody, right, that oxytocin, you know, gets, gets, gets released, you feel that feeling. So according to Dr. David Hamilton, oxytocin is also known as a cardioprotective hormone because it protects the heart by lowering blood pressure when you witness an act of kindness. That is amazing. Pretty cool, right? So there's physical acts of kindness are cardioprotective. Kindness strengthens your heart physically. It strengthens your heart emotionally. So maybe that's why they say that nice, big, caring people have these nice, great, big hearts, right? And I know a lot of you do. I'm reading what you all hear late, Lisa. Yeah, 20 bucks, right? Like you don't think that. There's always a person, you know, that, you know, I see sometimes in the shopping center and and um, I one day, you know, I, I always, my feeling is I always feel somebody's on the streets holding up their sign. Some people have that feeling, oh, well, they don't really need it or maybe they're this. My feeling is if you're holding up a sign in the street, like there's something going on for you, right? Like that's not something like the average Joe just does to make money. Like, you know, that takes your, you, you, your pride has to really be put aside to do that. So, you know, something so simple. And I remember going by, it was right at the beginning of COVID and I didn't have anything, but I had a bottle, small bottle of thieves, my purifier, and I had an extra mask. And so I just stopped and I gave that, right? And wow, like the reaction. So again, you know, these are just ways to make us happy, little, little things we can do. Um, all right, so number four, kindness reduces stress. In our busy, like always on the go lives, we're constantly looking for ways to reduce stress, right? I know I am. So helping others lets you kind of get out of yourself for a little while and take a break from like, just like, you know, the misery that is your brain sometimes, the stressors in your own life, right? And it can also make you better equipped to handle some stressful situations. I think there's no way, like, you know, I always say like when I'm stressed, I'll go for a run to get out of my head. But I think also when I, you know, when I go and I plunge myself into somebody else's you know, helping them in some way. It's hard to think about yourself because it kind of also puts usually your issue into perspective sometimes when you help somebody else and you realize, you know, whatever your frustration is, maybe in the big grand scheme of life isn't, you know, as important as maybe something that you're doing to help somebody else. So they call it as affiliative behavior. And if any behavior, affiliative behavior is any behavior that builds your relationships with others. So according to a study on the effects of pro-social behavior, pro-social behavior is action that's intended to help others. So this, according to this study on the effect of pro-social behavior on stress, affiliate behavior, affiliate behavior may be an important component of coping with stress and indicate that engaging in this pro-social behavior might be an effective strategy for reducing the impact of stress on emotional functioning. So somebody here mentioned phone a friend, right? That's kind of what I think about it, that when you're stressed, phone a friend, right? That connection to somebody else is sometimes maybe all you need to relax and let go of some stress. If you call an old friend and you just like go over old times and you just laugh your head off, right? It doesn't have to be like a serious discussion about what's stressing you off. Maybe it's, you know, we all have, we all have different friends in our lives, right? I was saying to my husband the other day, like there was somebody who was helping with me with something and, and they're just as like, you know, like, like me, they're like type A like me, they talk fast like me, and da, da 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 And the situation that I was in, like, I was like, God, oh, where's like my Zen friend? Sherry McGinsey, if you're listening, I always call her my Zen friend. But you know, like that friend who's just always chill, like no matter the situation, like no matter how, how anxiety everybody else is, they're always chill, 
right? So maybe that's the person you call when you're stressed, not the person who maybe is going to feed that. Or maybe it's the person who's just downright hilarious and makes you laugh, right? But connecting with somebody is a great way to reduce stress. And they say perpetually kind people have 23% less cholesterol, excuse me, less cortisol. Cortisol is our stress hormone. And cortisol is one of those things that help that, that add to that med midlife middle, right? Cortisol is a major factor of that stubborn weight gain that we as midlife women have. And kind people have 23% less cortisol, right? And they age slower than the average population. Cortisol causes many issues, right? So, you know, you know, besides that stubborn weight gain, so just being able to reduce our stress in this easy way can maybe help some of the other things that, that you're dealing with that may be stressing you out like the weight gain, right? Um, all right, and then number five, number five reason why uh, what kindness can do. Kindness can prevent illness. So inflammation in the body is associated with all sorts of health problems, such as diabetes, cancer, chronic pain, obesity, migraines. And according to a study of adults aged 57 to 85, volunteering manifested the strongest association with lower levels of inflammation. They equated volunteering with reducing inflammation. So oxytocin, right, that we keep hearing about that love hormone, it, um, it also reduces inflammation. So another reason to be able to do some of these kind acts. So even a little tiny act of kindness can reduce and trigger this release of this oxytocin. Engaging in acts of kindness produce the endorphins like we talked about, which is a, actually a natural painkiller, right? It's the brain's natural painkiller, are endorphins. So they say that people who tend to volunteer experience fewer aches, fewer pains, all of these reasons. So what are some places that maybe you guys volunteer? Do you, you know, I have to admit right now I'm not volunteering. I can think of anywhere. Um, it is, it's, it's, I have a lot, little list. I always start, so right around November, I start making my, my, what do I want my 20, my next year to look like? And so that was one of the things I have, I've put on my list is, is to volunteer because I used to, and I just, you know, for whatever reason. And in this day and age, I know it's a little harder because I know me, I physically don't want to go anywhere right now. So I'm going to look for some online opportunities to do that. But where's the places, whether either right now or in the past, maybe you've, you've volunteered. Um, and how did that feel when you did that? What else do I got here? Oh, more about volunteering right here, my notes here. So people 55 and older, it says, who volunteer for two or more organizations have an impressive 44% lower likelihood of dying early. And that's after sifting out like every other contributing factor, including physical health, exercise, gender, habits like smoking, marital status, and all of that. People who volunteer, okay, ladies, whew, now I got to get myself a second organization, a second place to volunteer, right? Volunteer for two or more organizations have a 44% lower likelihood of dying early. That's an easy fix. That is an easy fix. There is a stronger effect than exercising four times a week than going and even going right to that. All right. Being kind. Stronger effect than even exercising four times a week. Well, that's an easy fix for those of you who don't like to exercise. Right. So what's great about this is once we're over, five, over 55, we often have more time on our hands to volunteer. So let me see what you guys got here. Dog rescue. Oh, I love the dog rescue. What about the dog rescue? Your name's not showing up. Can you put your name in there so I know who that is? Yeah, that's one of the things on my list is the dog rescue, I have to admit. Uh, the food bank, yes. I've always wanted to do that too. That's a good one. Yeah. Oh, wait. Is that you, Corey, the dog rescue? I bet you that's Corey. Maybe that's my cousin Corey. I don't know. I know she's been doing the dog rescue. So anyways... Yes, excellent places. And then to be around, you know, just, just knowing you're doing good is just a really wonderful thing. So that is the five ways that being kind can improve your health. Did any of that surprise you at all? Right, number one, it releases the feel-good hormones. Number two, it reduces anxiety. It was, Corey, hi, Cor. Number three, it's good for your heart. Number four, it reduces stress. And number five, it reduces illness, right? So pretty cool things. So I hope that my Midlife Mojo talk today, you know, that this kind of heart to heart talk about kindness maybe has sparked a little bit in you to maybe go out either today, because you can do it right now, right today, you could do a little act of kindness or sometime this week, right? And just know that you are literally a little pebble 
in the in the big gray ocean of the world, starting that ripple out there. And you can be the start of that for sure. So that is all I have for our midlife mojo today, uh, Monday today. I do want to just let you guys know that um, I have stopped the Friday intermittent fasting Zoom calls. So if anybody is looking for those, I did stop those. I started my new win at weight loss program, which I'm just loving and the ladies in there are doing so wonderful on. And so that's where I'm doing my prima primary intermittent fasting support. But know that, of course, you can always ask questions in this group and myself will, uh, or somebody else definitely will chime in with an intermittent fasting question. But that is it for now. If there are any topics moving forward that you guys would love me to cover that I haven't yet, please let me know if there's any speakers, maybe that you think would be a great idea that I brought on that could benefit us all. I'd love to have their names or send them my way as well. And other than that, I want everybody to have a wonderful week and be kind to each other. All right. Have a good one, everyone.